In this lesson, we want to review solving proportion equations. So in this lesson, we're going to talk a little bit about how to solve proportion equations. It's a pretty simple concept. Again, it's something that most of you already know how to do. We're going to start out by just talking about the equality test for fractions. So essentially, you can tell if two fractions are equal by basically checking the cross products. So if I have something like 1 fourth and 3 twelfths, I can tell if they're equal by multiplying the denominator of one fraction by the numerator of the other. So four times three is 12. And then doing the same thing over here. So the denominator of one fraction by the numerator of the other, 12 times one is 12. If you get the same result in each case, then you have a proportion, right? You have two fractions or two ratios, or it could be two rates that are equal in value. So that's a proportion. So these are equal. I could say one fourth is equal to three twelfths. You can also see that that's equal because if I multiply one by three, I get three. If I multiply four by three, I get 12. So essentially all I really did here was take one fourth, multiply it by three over three, which is the complicated form of one, and I got three twelfths. Okay, so of course one fourth and three twelfths are equal. All right, let's look at another one. So we have nine fourteenths and we have 20 twenty sevenths. So again, we can check this guy by just cross multiplying. So I can multiply 14 times 20, it's pretty easy to do. You multiply 14 times 2, you get 28. You put a 0 at the end, you get 280. And I'd multiply 27 times 9, which would be 243. So these two values, these two cross products are not equal. So these two fractions are not equal. So we can say 9 14 is not equal to 20 27. So let's talk a little bit about solving proportion equations. We already reviewed previously how to solve equations with fractions. So one way you could solve this if you wanted to, you could multiply both sides of the equation by the LCD of all the denominators. But a quicker way when you just have one fraction equal to another is just to cross multiply, right? To set everything up. So in other words, if I have X over 38 is equal to two over 19, all I have to do is cross multiply, right? Because if we have two fractions that are equal, the cross product should be equal. So that means that 38 times two, which is 76, should be equal to 19 times x or 19x. So now all I gotta do is solve this in one step, divide both sides by 19, and I get x is equal to four. You can check that pretty easily. Just plug in a four for x there. You would have four over 38 is equal to two over 19. Of course this is true. If I take two and I multiply by two, I get four. If I take 19 and I multiply by two, I get 38. So essentially it's like I did this. I took two over 19 and I multiplied it by two over two and I got four over 38, right? So X is gonna be four in this case. What about something like X over 60 is equal to negative seven over 15? Again, we can just set this up by cross multiplying. So 15 times X is 15 X. This is equal to negative seven times 60. Negative seven times six is negative 42. And then just put a zero at the end. So it's negative 420. And now we just want to divide both sides by 15 so that I can isolate my variable X. And so what am I going to get? Negative 420 divided by 15 would be negative 28. So X is equal to negative 28, okay? And of course you can check that. You could plug in a negative 28 for X there. So you would have negative 28 over 60 is equal to negative seven over 15. Again, you can kind of eyeball this and see if I multiply negative seven times four, I get negative 28. If I multiply 15 by four, I get 60, okay? So we can see that that is correct, right? Negative 28 over 60 would reduce to negative seven over 15. So those two are equal. All right, let's take a look at another one. So we have nine over X minus seven is equal to six over X. So I'm gonna cross multiply here just like I normally would, but I've gotta be careful. Six is multiplying X minus seven. It's multiplying that quantity. So I would have six times the quantity X minus seven. The six has to multiply the X and it's gotta multiply the negative seven. A common mistake is just to put six X minus seven like that. Okay, that's wrong. The six has to multiply both of those terms. So six times the quantity X minus seven is equal to X times nine or nine X. So I'm just gonna kind of clean this up on the left. Six times X is six X. And then minus six times seven is 42. And this equals nine X. Let me subtract nine X away from each side of the equation. And let me add 42 to both sides of the equation. So what we're gonna have here is that this cancels and this cancels. And let me just kind of bring this up here to the top. 
we're going to say 6x minus 9x is negative 3x. And this is equal to, we're going to say 42. If we divide both sides of the equation by negative 3, we know we would have x is equal to 42 over negative 3. We know that's negative. And 42 over 3 is 14. So this would be negative 14 as our answer. Now, you can check this if you want. Let me erase everything. We'll plug in and make sure the left and the right sides are equal. Let me just kind of scooch this up. And I'm going to plug in a negative 14 here and here. So what you'd have is 9 over, you have negative 14 minus 7. Negative 14 minus 7 would be negative 21. Now, before I go any further, I know I can simplify this. Each is divisible by 3. 9 divided by 3 is going to be 3. Negative 21 divided by 3 is going to be negative 7. So let's just write this as negative 3 sevenths. So that's what I'm looking for here. If I plug in a negative 14, I'd have 6 over negative 14. So each is divisible by 2. If I divide 6 by 2, I get 3. If I divide 14 by 2, I get 7. And of course, it's negative there. So let me just throw that out in front. You see that you get negative 3 sevenths is equal to negative 3 sevenths. Okay? So we get the same value on the left as we get on the right. So we can say x equals negative 14 is our correct solution. All right, let's take a look at another. So we have 5 times the quantity 3x plus 1 over 7 is equal to 9x minus 3 over 3. So again, I'm just going to set this up by cross multiplying. So 7 multiplies the quantity 9x minus 3. So 7 times the quantity, again in parentheses, 9x minus 3, is equal to 3 multiplies. In this case, it's easier just to multiply the 3 by the 5 first. So 3 times 5 is 15, and then times this whole quantity, 3x plus 1. So now let me simplify each side. 7 times 9x is 63x, and then minus 7 times 3 is 21. This equals 15 times 3x is 45x, and then 15 times 1 is 15. So let me subtract 45x away from each side of the equation. And what's going to happen is this will cancel. Let me add 21 to both sides of the equation. And so this guy right here is going to cancel. So 63x minus 45x is going to give me 18x. And this equals 15 plus 21 is going to be 36. So let me erase all this. I don't need any of this anymore. All I'm going to do is divide both sides of the equation by 18 now so that I can isolate x. So let me drag this up here. I'm going to divide both sides by 18. So again, that I can isolate x. 18 over 18 is 1, so I just have x is equal to 36 over 18 is 2. Okay, so that's my solution. Now again, I like to check things. I think you should too. Plug in a 2 for x here and here and make sure you get a true statement. So if I had 5 times the quantity, 3 times 2 is 6, 6 plus 1 is 7. So this is 5 times 7 over 7. 7 over 7 is 1, so this is basically 5 on the left. So 9 times 2 is 18. 18 minus 3 is 15, so you'd have 15 over 3, which is 5 as well. So you get 5 equals 5. So x equals 2 is the correct solution here. All right, let's take a look at one more of these, and then we'll just kind of look at some word problems. So we have negative 12x plus 5 over 2 is equal to 7 times the quantity x minus 9 minus 3 over negative 11. So again, we set it up in the usual way. We're going to cross multiply. We've got to be careful here. 2 is going to multiply by this numerator. You've got to multiply 2 by each part. So you can kind of set this up using brackets. So 2 times. Inside of brackets, I'll just put my numerator. So 7 times the quantity x minus 9, and then minus 3. This equals, you're going to set this part up. So negative 11 times. You've got your quantity here, your negative 12x plus your 5. So you can go through here and you can distribute this to each part, or you can clean up what's inside and multiply by 2, whatever you want to do. 2 is going to multiply by 7 times the quantity x minus 9. That's just 14 times the quantity x minus 9. Then minus 2 times 3 is just 6, and this equals negative 11 times negative 12x is 132x. Then negative 11 times 5 is minus 55. Now, on the left-hand side, 14 times x is 14x, and then minus 14 times 9 is 126. Okay, then minus another 6. So if you had negative 126 minus 6, that would be negative 132. So that's my left side, 14x minus 132. And this equals, on the right side, you got 132x minus 55. Okay, so let's go ahead and solve this guy. I'm going to add 132 to each side of the equation. 
So we know that this is going to cancel. Then I'm going to subtract 132x away from each side of the equation. So this is going to cancel. So 14x minus 132x is negative 118x. And this equals, you've got negative 55 plus 132, which is 77. So let's go ahead and finish this guy up. Let's divide each part by negative 118. And this will cancel with this. You'll have x is equal to negative 77 over 118. Now, is this something that I can simplify? 77 is 7 times 11. 7 is prime, 11 is prime. 118 is not divisible by 11, and it's also not divisible by 7. So this is as simple as you can make it. So x is going to be negative 77 over 118. Now, this is something you can check just like we have throughout this lesson. But because it's so tedious, and in the interest of time, I'm not going to check it. But if you want to, you can go back, you can pause the video, plug in a negative 77 over 118 for each occurrence of x, and you'll see that the left and the right side are equal. All right, so now let's turn to some word problems. And these are typical examples that you would see if you were in a section where you're talking about solving proportions. So we have that Jacob drove his car 300 miles using 20 gallons of gas. How many gallons of gas would it take for Jacob to travel 1,200 miles? So this is a very easy problem to set up and solve. Essentially, what we want to do is take kind of the first information they give us and set up a unit rate, right? So it says Jacob drove his car 300 miles using 20 gallons of gas. So we have 300 miles per 20 gallons, 20 gallons of gas. And you can write of gas if you want. I'm just going to leave 20 gallons in the denominator. And so what I would want to do, or the easiest thing to do here, is just to get a unit rate. So 300, the number in the numerator, divided by 20, the number in the denominator, would be 15. So I could basically say that it's 15 miles per one gallon of gas. Okay, so that's a unit rate. Now, with the second part, we're asked a question. How many gallons of gas would it take for Jacob to travel 1,200 miles? So again, because the miles per gallon here, we're going to assume it stays the same, I can set up a proportion equation. So I can say this is equal to, the miles are going to be in the numerator, so I'm going to put 1,200 miles in my numerator over here, and this is over. The unknown here is the gallons of gas that would be used. So since gallons, or gallon in this case, is in the denominator, I'm going to just use x as a variable to represent the unknown number, and then my units would be gallons. Okay, so gallons. So once you've got this set up, it's very easy. You're just going to cross multiply. If your units are the same in the numerator, which in this case it's miles and miles, and your units are the same in the denominator, so you have gallon and gallons, same units, one singular, one plural, you're good to just cross multiply with the number parts, or in this case it's going to be a variable. So I would take 1 and multiply it by 1,200, so that's 1,200, and then set this equal to 15 times x, or just 15x. So all I need to do now is just solve the equation for x, and I can really quickly do that by just dividing both sides of the equation by 15. So what is 1,200 divided by 15? Well, that's going to give me 80, right? So I would get that x is equal to 80, and x here represents the number of gallons it's going to take for him to go 1,200 miles, okay? So let's erase everything, and we can just answer this. How many gallons of gas would it take for Jacob to travel 1,200 miles? We'll say it would take... 80 gallons of gasoline. All right, let's take a look at one more of these. So the distance between Smithland and Creek Falls is 2,400 miles. On a given wall map, this distance is scaled down to 4.8 feet. On the same wall map, how many feet would be between Port Charles and River Ridge, two cities which are 4,000 miles apart? So again, another easy one. Essentially, it tells us that we have this given wall map, and basically the scale is proportional, right? So it takes a certain distance in the real world, and it scales it down. So between Smithland and Creek Falls, it's 2,400 miles. So we're going to say that 2,400 miles over. On this wall map, it's scaled down to 4.8 feet. So 4.8 feet. We're just going to set up a proportion. 
Again, on the same wall map, we have this city, Port Charles and River Ridge. They're 4,000 miles apart, but we don't know how this is going to be expressed on our map. So to figure this out, we're just going to put 4,000 miles here in the numerator because that's their distance in real life, just like we had over here. And this will be over X feet. Okay, this is going to be the kind of distance on the map. How many feet will it be? So to figure this out, we're just going to cross multiply. We're going to take 4.8, multiply it by 4,000, which would give us 19,200. We set this equal to X times 2,400. So 2,400 X. And to solve this guy for X, I'm just going to divide both sides of the equation by 2,400. If I divide 19,200 by 2,400, I'm going to get 8, right? So X here is going to be equal to 8. So I can erase this. Got all my information now. Instead of saying X feet, this would really be 8 feet. So I can go back and just answer this. We would say they would be 8 feet apart on the wall map. 